welcome to the Robert Show. It's day one at NVIDIA GTC and I'm here with Dylan from Nebius. Uh, Dylan, hey. welcome to the Robert Show. It's your debut. Super excited to chat with you. Likewise, thank you for having me. Awesome. I'm, I know you've been working in, uh, you know, with the Nebius studio. I'm also wanting to learn a little about the different things that you do, you're doing in the space, what excites you here at NVIDIA GTC. But just for audience, would you like to quickly introduce yourself, tell us more about what you do at Nebius. Yeah, for sure. So I'm Dylan. I'm the PMM for Nebius AI Studio. Um, I'm based out of Paris, France. I joined Nebius around eight months ago now. Uh, so focusing, as you said, on the Nebius AI Studio. Um, and overall, I've been tinkering with AI for the last three or four years, uh, getting deep interest into it. And so it's a pleasure for me to be here today at GTC where all happens. That's awesome. Uh, I know Nebius AI Studio is talk of the town as well. So I'm kind of curious to learn about that. Uh, so can you tell me what is Nebius AI Studio and what are the challenges it's solving for the enterprises out there? Yeah, for sure. So as you said, uh, the studio is talk of the town. I guess LLMs and inference overall is the talk of the town. And so. Right. Nebius AI Studio is part of the Nebius company and it's an inference as a service platform that helps developers get a direct access to the latest AI open source models like Llama, Mistral, or DeepSeek, for example. Yep. Uh, the idea is to remove the complexity behind uh, infrastructure, complex infrastructure management or like high cost or steep learning curves and just give developers direct access to these latest models uh, with an API. And the goal here is also to do this in a scalable, reliable uh, and cost-effective way with enterprise-grade uh, reliability. Because we've seen a lot of developers like struggle with that, so I think it's uh, very important. That's a us. huge problem for sure for yeah. the developers out there that you all are solving. Uh, one more thing that I wanted to know about was about the core services, right, uh, that um, yeah. uh, the Nebius AI Studio offers, and how does it stand out in the market? Uh, so Nebius AI Studio, like, while still being pretty new, because we launched back in October, so it's just a couple months, um, but offers a wide range of services, so ranging from text generation uh, with different types of models, like reasoning models, like DeepSeek R1, uh, which made a lot of noise recently, but also mixture of experts models, so like domain-specific models. Right. Uh, and this is all in the text modality. Yeah. Then we have a text-to-image modality, which is uh, quite popular these days, with, for example, Flux, or like stable diffusion coming out. Um, we also have vision models, which could be very useful to do image recognition, like Lava or QuenVL, uh, which yep. are pretty popular on the studio. And then we have a whole range of other services, ranging from uh, embedding models that allow you to do RAG implementations, yep. uh, and also fine-tuning, which we launched recently. Though. So we have uh, two types of fine-tuning. We have uh, full fine-tuning and LoRa fine-tuning, uh, and the ability so to kind of adapt that domain to your specific use case, and then run, host the model on our platform and run inference on these models. And how do you choose these models, uh, which model to go for? So I, I guess there's a couple things here. Um, we get requests, regular requests from our users who have very specific use cases and specific needs for different models. Um, also, I guess it's all about looking at the market and what's going on. Uh, we've seen that, nice. uh, especially in the case of DeepSeek, it was kind of impossible to miss it. Like it was, it was everywhere. So, so true. Yeah, so that's kind of uh, one of the things that made us push it uh, really fast, I guess. Um, we're, we're trying to focus on, on getting more and more momentum and speed whenever a new model comes out. So we add it uh, in, in, in a matter of days or so sometimes even hours uh, if we can. So yeah, a whole lot of different things make us uh, decide how to push a new model. Right. Th th those are fantastic insights, uh, Dylan. I'm also curious to know about a little bit about the open source uh, models and how is that evolving and what is uh, Nebius's role in that ecosystem? Yeah, great question. I think overall, open source models are closing the gap with proprietary ones. Um, if, if you look a couple of months back, you'll see that uh, Claude and, and models from GPT from OpenAI were pretty far ahead in, in all the different benchmarks. But if you look now, you have a bunch of competitors that emerge out of the market. So I think, for example, just to cite a few, Lama, Quen, or DeepSeek yep. have really taken over and, and delivered open source models that kind of bridge that gap with uh, closed source models. So I think. Uh, overall, the open source um, community and, and the open source ecosystem has a bright future ahead in AI. And I, I think the mission of Nebius AI Studio here is to figure out how we can we can insert, like we, we can have a play in there by providing these people with these open source models, but not just providing inference on them, but providing it in a reliable, scalable, and, and a cost-effective way, which is a lot of people, uh, what a lot of people are looking for. I love it. Uh, that's fantastic and uh, great work in the open source uh, ecosystem. So thanks for sharing that. Uh, I'm also uh, wanting to learn since we are here at GTC. I know for a fact uh, you'll be showcasing the Street Fighter 3 AI Arena. 
Um, uh, so can you tell us a little about that too? Yeah, actually, uh, we have the demo going on, not right now, but we have a demo going on on the screen. So if you're yeah. around the GDC, you can have a look. So basically, the idea we're here was to underline um, how we can display and showcase what vision models could be used for. So models that interpret images and can provide text or answers based on that. And so what we did was actually um, run up a web-based uh, version of the game uh, Street Fighter mm. on uh, WebAssembly. And so we launched a game, and basically the idea is to have a model called Lava 1.57B, which is a very small vision model, so it provides very fast answers. Yep. Um, and so basically the, the process is the following. The game takes a screen, screenshot every few seconds, sends it to each of the models, and then based on those screenshots, the model take a decision and send that decision back into the game, creating okay. some sort of creative loop where both of the different models will play together. And so, so I think it's a great way to kind of um, underline how these vision models could be used in a day-to-day -day life and different apps. Of course, this is just a little game, which is Street Fighter, and we kind of somehow recreated the, the system of bots that you already have in video games. Yeah. But I think the, the, the core idea here is to just to show how you can use these vision models in a day-to-day -day life. For example, on OCR or image recognition or security or Very stuff like important. that. And I yeah. think that's, that's a really great uh, thing to underline. So the whole goal of this demo was to kind of showcase that. That's fantastic. Any use case that comes to your mind uh, which could be interesting for our um, I, I think overall, like for example, one we've been working on uh, and that's been pretty popular in the space is uh, talk to your PDF. So it's import any kind of PDF or image or text or right. anything like that and you do text extraction which a lot of people are faced with. So a, a good example I have in mind is for example, I submit my expenses so I need to take uh, photos of my receipts. Yep. And they all form either different. Sometimes they're even written by hand, by a taxi or some stuff. And so I think having, having these vision models allows to pull that information, understand more context than just pulling the actual information, understanding that I need to pull this data point and it amounts to this. It needs, it needs this information. So I think that's one of the great use cases of vision models uh, going I love forward. It. I love it. Uh, thanks for sharing that, Dylan. Uh, one more quick question for you. If folks want to reach out to you, learn more about the different things that you're doing, which is the best platform to reach out to you? Um, so a couple, so we have, uh, of course, uh, studio.nebios.com, which is our main website and the yes. console where you can go and play. So we have an API and a playground, so you can play around with the playground, compare the different models, generate images from there. So it's a great way to get started. And then if you want to go deeper, you can join us on our Discord, on Twitter, X. Nice. Uh, or by email or just on LinkedIn. So we're pre pretty available. Happy to answer any of the questions you may have and excited. Amazing. This is great, Dylan. Uh, such a pleasure chatting with you and learning more about the Nebius AI Studio. We'll keep the conversation going, uh, but I know the booth is jam-packed. So it is, it is. thanks for that. Uh, you know, Thanks for taking the time out and chatting with us today. Likewise. Thank you. Appreciate it. Have thank a good you one. very thank much. You. Thank you, everyone.